Good morning students, this is Miriam Takua and I will be taking you through the production and inventory cycle. Just a reminder that when you see a small speaker on your slide, that means there is an audio recording that you can listen to. I will guide you through the slides and through this topic. These are the study objectives for the production and inventory cycle. You will need to be able to understand the activities within the cycle, be able to design a system of controls for the cycle. If you are given a system description, you have to be able to identify the weaknesses within the system as well as give, uh, say what the implications of these weaknesses are and provide recommendations. We'll have a look at test of controls you will need to be able to identify key controls to meet certain control objectives. And then finally, we'll have a look at what are those substantive procedures that are applicable in this cycle. Also very important, we'll have a look at stock counts. So you need to understand what goes into a stock count, what procedures we need to perform, and also have a good grasp of why these stock counts are so important. The lecture outline for this topic is as follows. We'll break it down into two lectures. Lecture one, which is the current lecture that we are busy with. I'll give a basic introduction. We'll have a look at those activities and test of controls. At the end, there will be a objective test. And then lecture two will focus on stock counts and the importance of those stock counts and then uh, substantive procedures as well. So the production and inventory cycle is mainly concerned with achieving the following two objectives. First of all, it is taking custody of inventory and also then ensuring the safekeeping thereof. And secondly, it's recording the cost of inventory when it goes through a manufacturing or production process. Um, as you can see, there are different types of organizations and these different types of organizations would very clearly have a different focus when it comes to how they treat inventory. For example, a retailer would be concerned with purchasing inventory items from a, from a supplier, having enough or sufficient warehouse space or storage space so that they can store their inventory items safely and then selling it off to a customer at cost plus a certain profit margin. So it's a very, it's a fairly simple model for a retailer. Whereas when you are in the manufacturing space, you would be concerned with acquiring raw materials. There would be a process involved, which includes overhead costs, labor costs, for example, or machine hours, to turn that raw material into a finished good, which then can be sold to a customer at a profit margin. So different types of organizations, you can see these have different focus when it comes to how they treat inventory. It is very important that we always keep the bigger picture um, in mind when it comes to inventory and that is at the end of the day your inventory needs to be disclosed in your financial statement and whether you are a retailer or a manufacturer um, that is the end goal you need to be able to show your users of your financial statements how you get to your inventory number at the end of the year so if you are a retailer you may have had some opening inventory you would have purchased some goods during the year, you would have made some sales. And uh, so if you add your purchases to your opening inventory, deduct all your sales, you should be able to get to your closing inventory, right? When you are a man in the manufacturing space, uh, if you look at how do we calculate your goods manufactured, you would start off with, like I said previously, your raw materials or your direct materials add your labor costs, add your overhead costs, and that would give you what your total cost of sales would be. If you add a profit markup then, 
that would give you your sales and what you have sold at that profit to your customers okay so always keep the bigger picture in mind you need to be able to report those inventory movements and how the closing inventory number is made up of in your financial statements so different elements of your inventory cycle will be disclosed in different parts of your financial statements in your statement of comprehensive income for example uh, your inventory movements will be shown in your cost of sales balance if you are in the manufacturing environment that would include things like raw materials labor costs any overhead costs those would be included in your cost of sales balance if there was any obsolete inventory that you had to write off during the year that obsolete inventory written off will also be reflected in your statement of comprehensive income and then it's important to remember that input VAT element there that needs to be taken into account in your statement of comprehensive income as well in your statement of financial position we all know that inventory is an asset and it's usually classified as a current asset so that would fall within your statement of financial position included there as well would be your provision for obsolete stock and then again just a reminder there that your net output VAT effect also then would come through in your statement of financial position so within different areas of your financial statements you will see elements of the inventory cycle coming through so the way that a business creates a product is known as the production process now the production process has got three phases the first phase phase is the inputs phase um, then we go into the transformation process then which leads us to the outputs phase so when we are looking at inputs these would include in the manufacturing um, environment things like your raw materials or your direct materials um, labor cost spent uh, any cost spent on land or space for you to be able to go through this transformation process any machinery that you may need okay so when we now transform our raw materials into finished goods that's what we call the transformation process and those finished goods or services those are our outputs okay so the ultimately the main objective in the production process is to create goods or services that meet the needs of your customers at the end of the day you need to be able to sell those finished goods or services to your customers all right so um, it is very important that this whole production process is efficient or as effective as it can be in order for you to have a good product that you can sell at a profit margin at the end of your production process if you look at this uh, production process it's very easy to visualize or to see that there are other cycles involved here as well in your inputs phase for example you are acquiring or you are purchasing raw materials so there we're looking at uh, your purchases and payable cycle would come into play there if you look at outputs and your finished goods or services that you need to sell there you can see revenue and receipt cycle uh, comes into play there so within this whole production process there may be other cycles that you also need to consider like with any other cycle there are risks involved within the production and inventory cycle when we are working with physical inventory there's always going to be the risk that inventory can be lost or stolen and this can be as a result of inadequate physical controls or inadequate control over the transfer for example unauthorized issues from the warehouse to where the uh, items are being sold um, in terms of the valuation there could also be circumstances or instances where the value of your inventory deteriorates as a result of just the nature of your inventory items or because there's inadequate physical controls inventory could get damaged and then 
effectively the valuation would go down. When we look at the production process, there could be delays or inefficiencies coming in when, exa for example, uh, you buy incorrect raw materials or your raw materials are not available or the quality of the raw material is not good. Okay, so there could be delays and inefficiencies coming through in your production process. Um, when we look at costing of inventory, there could be inadequate recording of the costs. And also, um, some manufacturing transactions could be very high in volume and very complex. And there's always going to be that increased risk of errors or fraud coming through when you are recording the volume or when you are when, when the manufacturing process itself is very complex you know that is2 gives us the valuation rule which says inventory has to be valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value so when it comes to determining that net realizable value there is a risk that this um, may be difficult to establish this net realizable value all right so the nrv there also poses a risk. Uh, many large businesses may store their inventory at multiple locations, and they may also transfer inventory between these different locations. So when we have multiple uh, locations, there's always going to be that increased risk that the goods in transit between these locations may be omitted from both the sending and the receiving store or they may be they may be duplicated so they could be shown in inventory both in the sending store as well as the receiving store okay so just remember when there are multiple locations there's there's some risk involved there also inventory may be held on a consignment basis okay so although they are physically on your premises you may not be the owner of that inventory Okay, so the risk there is that consignment stock or consignment inventory could be included as part of your inventory when in actual fact it's just inventory standing there and it belongs to someone else. It doesn't belong to you. Okay, so various risks involved in the recording or in the recognition of inventory. In order for management to mitigate the risks that we just spoke about, they need to design and implement certain controls. Now, these controls are put in place to safeguard inventory and to ensure that the appropriate cost is applied at each stage of the production process. Now, to make it easier for us, we're going to divide the entire inventory cycle into three phases, and then we'll pinpoint the controls um, in for, for each of these phases. So the first phase is production, planning, and design, which is the design of items to be manufactured, the production, planning, and the control thereof. You'll see on the slide there are some examples of controls that take place or that can be implemented within this phase. The second phase is the production processing phase. Now within this phase you are issuing raw materials to the production process. There's movement of goods through the production process. And at the end, there's a transfer of the manufactured goods to your finished goods. Okay, so the third phase then within, this, within the inventory cycle is inventory management. Now, in inventory management, this is where we look at the receipt and recording of manufactured or purchased goods. And then, of course, the storage of inventory and the maintenance of inventory records. All right, you'll see on the slide there, again, some examples there of controls, quality checks that are in place, what is the condition of your warehouses, how are sales prices determined, how are goods dispatched, that sort of thing. Okay, so those are your three phases that we'll be focusing on in terms of controls, production planning and design, production processing and inventory management. Students, this is the end of part one of lecture one. I will have a separate presentation for part two of lecture one. Thank you.